Hi, good day. Today is another episode of Dr. George's Logic. Uh, the topic today is factorization. So I'm going to demonstrate some stuff to you all. We're going to go through uh, factorization when the highest power is 1 and also when the highest power is 2. All right? So without any delay, let's begin. Okay, so when the greatest power is 1, and when I mean power, uh, whatever is the variable, in this case the variable is A, whenever the greatest power of that variable is 1, it's very simple how we would work out, how we would factorize an equation like this, an expression. Alright? So in this, this example over here, we have 2A plus 4, and we ask to factorize 2A plus 4. So, the first thing we have to look at is what is the greatest common factor between all uh, components of this equation? What is the greatest common factor? So, if we analyze 2a and 4, what is the greatest common factor? And that will actually be, the greatest common factor would actually be 2. Because 2a, the greatest factor that could fit into 2a is 2. The greatest that could fit into this, uh, that is common to this one, the 2a, is also 2. So, GCF is equal to 2. So what we do next is we actually divide the entire expression by the GCF and then we place the result of the division by the GCF in brackets and we place the GCF outside, right? Now I call it GCF, some persons like to call it the lowest, the um, highest common factor, right? I like to be different, so I actually we we'll call it the GCF or greatest common factor. So what we do is we divide 2a plus 4 by 2. And that should give us a plus 2. What we're going to do next is we're going to put the a plus 2 in a bracket to give us A plus 2. And we're going to put the GCF outside the bracket, which is 2. So, after factorization, this is our answer. 2A plus 4 is equal to... 2 outside the brackets, A plus 2 inside the brackets. And how we double check, how we double check that this is the correct answer is by simply expanding the expression here. So, expanding the expression, we have 2 multiplied by A gives us 2A plus 2 multiplied by 2 inside here gives us 4 which is our original expression of 2a plus 4 here. So the answer, 2a plus 4 factorized gives us the result 2 outside the brackets and a plus 2 inside the brackets. So that was simple. We saw how to actually factorize an expression where the variable, the highest power, is 1. So let's try another one. A little bit more complicated, but let's add another variable and then factorize it. So we have 6x plus 9y plus 18, right? So we have two variables. The maximum uh, power for any of the variables is 1. So let's factorize. First thing we need to do is to find the GCF. Right? 
if we analyze all of those components what is the greatest common factor among them so let's start by looking at six what are the factors we have one two three and six look at this nine now we have one three and nine look at the 18 we have one two three six nine and 18 all right so i'm including both the only ones for one of them and i also including the maximum value so if you observe these three categories now what is the greatest common factor among all three of them and if you look properly you would realize three 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 there is no other factor that is common no other greater factor that is common to all three of those um sub expressions so gcf is three So what's the next thing we're going to do? We need to now divide the expression 6x plus 9y plus 18 by the GCF. So when we do that, we're going to have 6x plus 9y plus 18 divided by GCF 3. That's going to give us... 2x plus 3y plus 6. And when we get that expression after divided by the GCF, what we're going to do as usual, we're going to put this in a bracket. 2x plus 3y plus 6 and put the GCF on the outside, which is 3. And that's the answer. After factorizing, that's our answer. If we want to verify that that answer is correct, all we do is expand the expression. So 3 by 2x gives us 6x, right? 3 by 3y gives us 9y. And 3 by 6 gives us 18. Final expression is this, which is identical to what we had before. So, this expression factorized will be this expression here. 3 outside, inside 2x plus 3y plus 6. So, that seemed very simple, right? Uh, when the variables, the highest value, the highest power is 1, it's very simple. Right, you just have to look at find what the GCF is, divide the entire expression by GCF. The result of dividing the expression by GCF resides in the brackets, and the GCF is outside, and that's it. Now, what about if the highest power of the variable is actually 2? There's a certain way that we actually look through, we actually attempt those questions. It's more or less a five-step solution that is common to all questions like that, right? In no book you look at these days, you're going to find that procedure outlined, right? In the books that I wrote, I've always included that detailed um, procedure to actually solving questions like this. So let's look at an example. All right, so first thing to bring to your attention is any expression where the variables are, uh, the maximum value of the variable is two, is called a quadratic expression, right? So it's of always of the form, as you see in here, ax plus bx plus c, 
where a, b, and c are coefficients of that quadratic expression. So when I refer to a, b, and c, I am actually referring to the coefficients of the quadratic expression. Now the five part, five step procedure for factorizing such an expression is as follows. First step is you have to multiply a by c. Second is we're gonna find factor pairs of a and c. And then the third step, we're gonna find the appropriate factor pair when it's summed up. It gives us the exact value of b. Then four, we're gonna replace b in the expression with those factor pairs. And then we're gonna complete the factorization process. So, let's attempt such a question. Factorize x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus 1. Right? So, first thing we need to establish is the coefficients a, b, c. So comparing it with the quadratic expression, ax squared plus bx plus c, we compare those two equations and we would be able to determine what a, b, and c are. Right? So comparing the expressions, we could determine that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 1. Right? By comparing the expressions, we can see what they are. x squared is simply 1 multiplied by x squared. So a is equal to 1. 2x is bx in this case compared to 2x. b is equal to 2. And c is equal to 1. So, we have gotten what A, B, and C are. So, let's move to the first step. Step 1. Multiply A by C. That should give us, and let me just add some detail to these values. A is equal to 1, positive 1. B is equal to positive 2. C is equal to positive 1. Right, so you add that in there. So a by c is equal to positive one multiplied by positive one, which gives us positive one. So that's step one. A multiplied by c gives us positive one. Let's go to step two. Step two is to find factor pairs. Right? So I would say, let's look at four factor pairs. We're going to look at positive 1. And, and when we mean factor pairs, num numbers appear that we could actually, we, when we multiply them together, we're going to get the value of A and C. So if we multiply those pairs together, we're going to get the value of A multiplied by C, which is positive 1. So one factor pair is positive 1 and positive 1. When we multiply positive 1 by positive 1, what do we get? Positive 1. And next one is negative 1 and negative 1. We multiply negative 1 by negative 1, we get positive 1. So those are the two factor pairs that correspond to this value of AC. So step three now, step three requires us to find the factor pair that when we sum them together, we are going to get the value of B. Let's recall that B is equal to plus two. So whichever factor pair is the most appropriate in this scenario is going to sum up to positive 2. So let's test them. 
the first factor pair positive 1 positive 1 that is positive 1 plus positive 1 will give us positive 2 and let's try the second one negative 1 plus negative 1 gives us what value negative 2 so tell me which is the most appropriate which factor pair when I sum them up together gives me the value of B and that would be this one positive 1 positive 1 so we're moving forward with those factor pairs this one so step 4 now step 4 is we need to actually go back to the first equation we had which is step 4 We go back to the equation we had at the start, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Where this is 1 is basically a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, c is equal to 1. And we are going to replace b with the factor pairs. So therefore, replacing b with the factor pair, we actually have x squared plus... 1 plus 1 x plus 1 so replace the b with the pairs plus 1 plus 1 remember that's why we said that whatever factor pairs are appropriate have to be able to sum up to what b is so when we expand that out we're going to end up with x squared plus x plus x plus 1 yeah and what we do now is we go to step 5 where we complete the factorization process and how we complete the factorization process is more or less applying what we learned in the first example where the maximum power was equal to 1 we look at the groupings and we treat them like we did for the first example where the power was 1. We find the greatest common factor and we just divide them and just leave the greatest common factor outside. So we could simply move this equation to x squared plus x plus x plus 1 and we start to factorize so it basically turns out to be x on the outside x plus 1 plus 1 on the outside x plus 1 and we decide to look at what is the common expression for both of them common expression is x plus 1 x plus 1 you can decide to do it the long way or the short way. The long way is what we did in the first question, where we actually find the, great, the greatest common factor and so on. We divide it by them and then put the greatest common expression of factor B on the outside. Or we could just realize that these two expressions are the same. They are common to both halves of the expression and just pull it outside. X plus 1 on the outside. And what's going to be in the inside? The remainder x so x plus 1 is on the outside since it's common and what's remaining x plus 1 x x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 remains with x and 1 outside x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 and we end up with 1 so therefore after factorization this is our answer Now, if we want to test that this is correct, all we need to do is to expand. 
expand this expression and that is basically x by x gives us x squared plus x by 1 gives us x plus 1 by x gives us x and 1 by 1 gives us 1. And we just simplified x squared plus x plus x to x plus 1. And we get back the original expression. So our answer here is correct. Alright, so that seemed a little complicated, right? And since it seemed a little complicated, some of you all may have gotten through with it, followed up with it. And some of you all may still need some practice. So we're going to do our next question like that. Our next uh, question in which the expression, the greatest power is 2. And I'm going to make it a little more complicated this time. All right, so let's try the second one. So we require to factorize 2x. And it's supposed to be 2x squared. 2x squared plus 13x plus 6 seems a little more complicated than the last example right same procedure first step step 1 well before even step 1 let's establish what a b and c are so a is equal to 2 b is equal to 13 and c is equal to 6 so step 1 is to find a c so we find a c by multiplying what those values are and let me just add in the, the signs plus 2 plus 13 plus 6 so therefore a c is equal to plus 2 multiplied by plus 6 which gives us plus 12 Step two is to find the factor pairs. And what we mean by factor pairs is those, we're going to get two numbers, which we call the factor pairs, when we actually multiply them by each other, we will get the value of AC, which is plus 12. So, Possible factor pairs are plus 2 and plus 6. Negative 2, negative 6. Plus 3, plus 4. Negative 3, negative 4 plus 1 plus 12 negative 1 negative 12 all right and those are the the only ones i could think of so when you multiply them for instance plus 2 by plus 6 gives us plus 12 negative 2 by negative 6 gives us plus 12 plus 3 by plus 4 gives us plus 12 negative 3 by negative 4 gives us plus 12 and the, the same thing applies to the last two so that's step two step three is to find the factor pairs that when we sum them up together we will get the value of b so let's recall recall b is equal to plus 13 which of these factor pairs here, when we sum them up together, we are going to get positive 13? So let's test them. Plus 2 plus 6 gives us plus 8. Negative 2 plus negative 6 gives us negative 8. Alright? Plus 3 plus 4 is give us plus 7. Negative 3 plus negative 4 gives us negative 7. Plus 1 plus 12 gives us plus 13. And negative 1 
plus negative 12 gives us negative 13. So which of these factor pairs we should go forward with? The answer is this one. Plus 1 and plus 12. So that pair, when we sum them up together, we get B. So step 4 now is actually to replace B in the equation with the factor pairs. So the original expression is 2x squared plus 13x plus 6. And when we replace them, we're going to end up with 2x plus let me put some color. 1 plus 12 x plus 6. Expand them out 2x and just the correction 2x squared. Expand it out 2x squared plus x plus 12x plus 6. And we just factorize as you all did before. That's step 5. Step 5, complete the factorization process, which means we are going to look at what is common between the groupings here, and we're going to pull what is common outside. So 2x squared plus x, what is common? x. So we pull the x outside, and we remain with 2x plus 1. Plus, what is common between 12x and 6? Six. 6. So 6 comes outside. We have 2x plus 1. And if we look at both sides, what is common to both sides? 2x plus 1. So we are going to pull 2x plus 1 outside. And what everything else is going to be inside. x remains and 6. And that's the answer. And if we want to test whether it's correct, all we need to do is to just expand. 2x by x gives us 2x squared plus 2x by 6 gives us 12x plus 1 by x gives us x plus 1 by 6 gives us 6. We sum that up, we're going to have 2x squared plus 13x plus 6, which is the same, the same expression we had at the start. So you saw how easy that was? Just follow the steps, follow the procedure, right? Analyze the expression a bit, use the five steps, and you're going to always be able to work out that. And, and the thing about this is as you do, as you practice this more and more, you would not have to follow formally follow the step step one step two step three you will be able to just run through the question with the steps already in mind and work out the solution All right so you'll be able to really compact your answer All right so it's very easy so you should probably just use the steps to train yourself and then actually now uh, reduce the time you take to work out the questions as you go along so I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you on the next one.